2 Thessalonians chapter 2 conclusively proves that no Christian is going to see the Antichrist, the man of sin, the son of perdition, as he's called, called by many titles. Let's start out here, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 1. Now I beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit nor by word nor by letter as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Now, a lot of commentators will say, well, the day of Christ is a reference elsewhere to the rapture. Um, okay, the catching up of the body of Christ, or time when the dead in Christ rise first, and then we which are alive and remain, caught up together with them in the clouds, meet the Lord in the air. Certainly. Um, and they'll say, see, so it's, day of Christ means rapture elsewhere, but here, and so it has to mean it here. So it's just, it always means the same thing. Day of Christ is always the rapture. Um, okay, well, that gives you a couple problems. Problem number one, that you be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit nor by word nor by letter as from us as the day of Christ is at hand. Why would you be troubled uh, knowing that the rapture, we'll just call it rapture, I know that's not a Bible word, but the catching up of the body of Christ. Why would you be troubled that that's at hand? If somebody said to me, I can prove conclusively, I mean, the Lord showed me this thing, that the catching up, you know, we're just about ready to leave. We're going to be leaving. I'm not going to be troubled by that. Um, what's it talking about? Well, if you look at verse 5, we'll get back to the rest of the stuff here in just a minute, but if you look at verse 5 of the chapter there, it says, Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things. Um, what's the name of the book here? Second Thessalonians. Well, then we need to go back to First Thessalonians. And what did Paul tell them? Did Paul mention something about the day of Christ back then? Look at uh, chapter 5, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Um, you have chapter 4, verse 16 through 18, talking about the catching up, defining it. But of the times and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you, for yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. What did Paul write to them about in the first letter? The day of the Lord. And yet here in the second letter to them, he says the day of Christ Remember you not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things. Now think about this. Logically think about this for a minute. Okay? Would you be troubled if you are a Christian and you're being told the day of the Lord is coming, the second coming, in other words, is at hand? You'd say, well, then I missed the rapture. I missed the catching up of the body of Christ. I missed it? Huh, it would trouble you. Hey, the catching up is at hand. We're almost there. Really? You wouldn't be troubled. What is Paul talking about there then in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 2? He is talking about the second coming. He calls it the day of Christ there. Well, I know that messes up the little commentary thing, you know, whatever else. The day of Christ is always a rapture. Um, but you compare Scripture with Scripture. All right? Paul is saying, don't be troubled as at the day of Christ. Referring to the second coming. I mean, the day of the Lord there, the day of Christ, as it's said here, starts the millennial kingdom. The second coming starts the millennial kingdom. And if I told you that that time is at hand, you would say, I thought we were going to be caught up. See? You'd be troubled, in other words. Verse 3. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first to the two things, post-tribbers will love this, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, all right? who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. And they say, see, before the catching up, before the rapture, because they make the day of Christ the rapture, which it's not in context, but they'll say, before the rapture, there has to come a falling away, the great apostasy, the falling away from the faith. Certainly we see that today. And there has to be the Antichrist is revealed. Yay, we win. We'll be here at least to see the Antichrist. Uh, no, we won't. Absolutely not. Very sloppy exposition of the scripture. All right. They're not comparing things. How do you know? Verse 4. Who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God? Um, I thought our bodies are the temple. Of the Holy Ghost. Right now, there is no temple of God. But there will be in the time of Jacob's trouble. The time of uh, 
Jacob's trouble. Israel, you know, Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 7. It's Israel's trouble. The time of Jacob's trouble. The time that's coming is for the nation of Israel, not for the church. We're not rebuilding a temple. And we don't have to worry about the Antichrist going and sitting down in the temple. And don't tell me it's some, you know, these, another, another thing posties will do. They'll, they'll try to spiritualize it. Well, see, when it says sitting down in the temple, it means that the Christian is thinking about, you know, or something. Oh, please, give me a break. That's nonsense. He causes the sacrifice and ablation to cease. So then you've got to throw that in back in Daniel chapter 9. Then you've got to throw that into the whole mix too. You've got to spiritualize it and say, when it, when it says sitting in the temple, um, it's actually, you know, referring to uh, symbolically. Uh, mm -hmm. And then when, what do you do with the, causing the sacrifice and oblation to cease? You know, <laughs> it's a problem. So what am I saying? I'm saying no Christian can be here for that time. We can't be here. I'm going to show you an even plainer reason here in just a minute. Actually, we'll do it right now. You say, well, we're going to be here to see the Antichrist. Oh, no. Oh, boy. Don't let the false prophets get to you, brethren. There's plenty of them out there. And even ones that are so-called Bible believers, they're backing off. And they're trying to say, well, I think that we're going to be here. I'm sorry to say it, but I, it's what the Bible teaches. No, it isn't. You've just fallen away from the Lord. I'm not saying that they're lost, some of these people, but they're away from the Lord and they're messed up doctrinally. Revelation chapter 5, verse 8, we'll start there. And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and four and twenty elders fell down before the Lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of saints. And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to, worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain, and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred, and tongue, and people, and nation, and hast made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. Redeemed saints, Christians, in heaven, before Revelation chapter 6. Before the Antichrist is unleashed. Revelation chapter 6, verse 1 and 2. And I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard, as it were, the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts saying, Come and see. And I saw, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering, and to conquer. Huh? Um, so you mean to tell me that there's blood-redeemed saints in heaven before, and they're crowned, too, by the way, interesting, and they're there before the Antichrist is even unleashed? Then why would somebody come out and say, I'm a Bible-believing preacher, and I'm preaching that we're going to be here to see the Antichrist? Uh, you're quite foolish. You've gotten away from the Lord if you're saying that. Plain teaching of Scripture, brethren. And the uh, 24 elders, you say, well, those are Jews. Those are the 12 Jewish uh, apostles or disciples, however you want to say it, and the 12 patriarchs. Um, then they wouldn't be out of every kindred, tongue, people, and nation. Think about that. And uh, how many boundaries did God set up back in Deuteronomy chapter 32, verses 8 and 9, I believe it is? 12. What's 12 times 2? 24. 24 elders out of every kindred, tongue, people, and nation. God picks two of every boundary and makes them the elders. Two saints. They're not all Jews. Okay? <laughs> and they're in heaven before the Antichrist is unleashed on the earth. So some guy comes along and he tells you, I just, I've been going over this. I've been studying it and things and, and whatever. Uh, uh, they're lying to you. Just as simple as that. But let's continue. Verse 5. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things. Back in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. And now you know what withholdeth, look at this, that he might be revealed in his time. And again, a lot of these Bible blockheads out there, they'll say, well, see, this is, a, the he is, um, it's the son of perdition, and he is revealed in his time, the Antichrist time, because it's easy, Antichrist, or I'm probably messing this up a little bit the way that their kooky system is, but it's the Antichrist, and then at the three and a half year mark, he's, you know, wounded in the head, and then, and then he comes back to life, so the he in his time, you couldn't be farther away from the truth. 
Um, what's it talking about? Now you know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. Who's the he? That would be verse 4. Okay, and part of verse 3, the man of sin, and verse 4, totally there. He can't be revealed in his time. What's the his? Time of Jacob's trouble? No. Because he will be revealed in the time of Jacob's trouble. So how could he not be revealed in his time? That doesn't make any sense. What's it talking about? Uh, what time are we in right now? Many would say the church age. The time where the body of Christ is on the earth. You see, there are reason, the reason there's an antichrist is because the other Christ has left. The body of Christ. Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? Jesus Christ says to Saul on the road to Damascus. Saul never persecuted Jesus Christ. Oh, yes, he did. Because Saul was persecuting the body of Christ. Christians. The Antichrist can't be revealed until the body of Christ has left. He cannot be revealed in his time, the body of Christ's time. <clears throat> Verse 7. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Is the spirit of Antichrist already here? Absolutely. Has it been here for a long time? Absolutely. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. Okay? You say, what's that? That's the Holy Spirit. Some people, that's the Holy Spirit. And then they go, well, it can't be the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit's omnipresent. Yes, you're correct in that. Well, then what is it? Well, then see, it's, it must be the Antichrist and he's, he's hindering the son of perdition or the, you know, Apollyon from coming up and it, all these stupid interpretations. No, it's not talking about that. It's talking about the body of Christ, his time. He who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. All right? Talking about the body of Christ. The Holy Spirit there as, as well, you know, he is hindering, he is letting. Why? Because he needs to be taken out of the way, the body of Christ. See, so again, you believe in the Godhead, you realize that they're just one being. All right? There's separation, just as there's separation between body, soul, and spirit. Father, Son, Holy Ghost. There's separation there, but it's just one being. Body, soul, spirit. So, the Holy Spirit is within me right now, but I'm part of the body of Christ. The Holy Spirit in me is hindering the Antichrist from showing up in the time of the body of Christ. His time. Verse 8. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, Revelation 19, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming, even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. All right? And you can go on and on and on. But my whole point is there, um, this is one of the strongest proofs that there is that the body of Christ cannot be here to see the Antichrist. And it's so funny because posties, I've seen this thing with all these post-tribbers. They fail with Matthew chapter 24. They, they mix it all up and they realize, okay, there's a lot of stuff to the Jews there and they kind of, you know, you know, pray that your flight be not on the winter neither on the Sabbath day. And they're going, oh, what do we do about that? You know, let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Uh, let's not talk about that one either. So they kind of say, okay, well, we'll just kind of abandon that position. Uh, we'll still pretend that it's there, but we'll just kind of, sneak on over here to Second Thessalonians chapter 2 and these wicked little devils will read down to verse 4 and quit. Or down to verse 5 even sometimes if they're really daring. But they won't want to go on to verses 6, 7, and 8. They'll skip that. Because you can pin them. Pin them very quickly. So uh, don't let anybody shake your faith. Be not troubled. You know? I don't care who they are, what good things that they've said and whatever else. If they're trying to say that uh, the body of Christ is going to be here to see the Antichrist, um, they're not getting it from the Holy Spirit. Uh, there are people, brethren, uh, that I've seen that I have respect for and whatever else and uh, in the Bible-believing movement, but they, get, they just get mixed up. They keep doing something that they shouldn't be doing, and the Holy Spirit just says, Okay, see ya. And these guys, they get to read in books and they get to read in other things and whatever else and they put down their Bibles and uh, they just keep doing things that the Lord condemns and try to convict them and they just 
push the Lord out of their life. And as a result, they get far off on doctrine. And they get put on the shelf. And if you listen to them, you'll, they'll mess you up too. Uh, don't let them mess you up. Uh, the body of Christ is very clearly in Revelation chapter 5. Okay, you have the 24 elders, but then it goes on to talk about a great number of angels. Okay, uh, in the resurrection, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels of God in heaven. Beloved, now are we the sons of God. Sons of God in the Old Testament is a reference to angels. <coughs> We're going to be with the Lord before the Antichrist is even unleashed. Revelation chapter 6, the first seal is not even opened. We cannot be here to see the Antichrist. Just as simple as that. Anybody tells you different, they're lying.